Herzliches Willkommen uh, bei unserem nächsten um, Estate Coho Webinar. Um, hello, I'm really happy to uh, see you today here uh, attending uh, this webinar. Uh, we will switch soon uh, to English, and, but before that, I would like to um, welcome uh, the German community first. Um, wir haben jetzt die vierte Woche um hier in Estland in um, Corona-Pandemie. Um, die Gesundheitssituation ist um, in Estland ziemlich stabil, um, da wir geschafft haben, sehr schnell alle Geschäftstätigkeiten um, auf um, Distanz uh, umzustellen. Leute bleiben zu Hause und das Business läuft uh, so gut wie uh, möglich. Um, für ein Online-Unternehmen wie Estate Guru hat sich in sich nicht viel geändert. Um, wir haben jetzt uh, vor kurzem auch geschafft, um, estländische Notargeschäft uh, online, zu verbring uh, on online zu bringen. Das mhm. heißt, die Verträge werden jetzt auch um, online um, unterschrieben. Um, heute haben wir auch eine Präsentation ähm, gemacht, aber das Wichtigste ist dabei, dass ich Ihnen ermutige, die Fragen während des Webinars rüberzuschicken ähm, und dann können wir halt so eine Online-Diskussion ähm, aufführen. Natürlich ist es auch okay, die Fragen am Ende ähm, zu schicken. Dafür haben wir auch ähm, genügend Zeit. Ähm, wie schon gesagt, ich habe heute für Sie ähm, Leiter der Estate Guru Kreditabteilung äh, eingeladen, damit er die wichtigsten Themen ähm, durchgehen kann. Hm, da er leider kein Deutsch kann, äh, werden wir das äh, Interview in Englisch durchführen. Nachher ähm, werde ich das Video mit deutschen Untertiteln auf YouTube hochladen. Ich glaube, das passiert nächste Woche, hoffentlich Montag, Dienstag schon. Also, ich wünsche Ihnen viel Spaß. So, um, let's move to English now. Um, firstly, Andres, would you like to introduce yourself shortly and maybe talk about the topics that we are covering today? Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Andres and I am Chief Credit Officer in Estate Guru. And uh, my background is banking, credit risk analysis, and I've been working in the financial sector over 10 years, in a state guru over one year, and I'm mainly responsible um, of uh, credit analysis of new projects, uh, also debt collection, data science, and uh, I also help in general risk uh, analysis of the group. Uh, today, uh, we are going to talk about uh, mainly the macroeconomic situation, and, and we will also Uh, stop at real estate market outlook. Um, we will see also what has changed uh, in our credit policy. Um, we also answered the um, question why loan prolong prolongation should be the new normality. Uh, I will give a short overview of our credit portfolio and also we will um, talk about the changes that we have made in our debt management and also in our communication to investors. Uh, you are free to ask any questions and Katri can tell me if, if you have and, and we, we should answer them uh, right away. So no need to leave uh, anything in, 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 into the end. So, so please be, be free to ask if you want. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, should I start? Yes. Uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think it looks, uh, sounds really interesting topic in today's situation. So. Um, so yeah, you can mm -hmm. start. Okay, so the last, I can say that four, four to five months have been quite uh, interesting in, in, the, in our world. So we have a health crisis uh, with financial impact and, and as you all know, most of the world is in quarantine. Um, that has impacted uh, the global global economic growth and, and we see and hear more and more that uh, uh, economies are reporting negative uh, GDP growth numbers and IMF 
is forecasting that uh, in 2020, the overall world uh, growth will be negative, minus 3%. It is even worse than in the last financial crisis in 2008-9. Um, our markets uh, are also affected by this. And we see that uh, in Germany, in the Baltics, the growth rate will be minimum, minus 5%. However, uh, real estate isn't directly affected. Uh, there, are, there are some other sectors like tourism, tourism and, uh, and for, for example, uh, uh, restaurants and catering and so forth, which will, which will see more uh, worse decline than other sectors. And in my opinion, uh, quick recovery will come only if the virus outbreak is contained and, and people stay at home and take it seriously. In some countries, uh, the methods um, used to fight with the virus are very, very strict. But in some countries, for example, in Sweden, they have been very loose. But, but then now they are, are getting to understand that the uh, situa situation is very hard. And so, so everything uh, depends on the on the governments, how they uh, strict people from, from moving and, and how they uh, communicate this, that it, the virus uh, is, is very serious uh, uh, problem in our world. Um, I see that um, when we compare the last financial crisis, the governments have been supporting now more uh, companies and households, for instance, uh, in Estonia, we have now extra budget. Uh, uh, banks are giving um, uh, payment, uh, like reliefs, and uh, and also the government-related uh, funds are giving more guarantees to companies. And also our unemployment fund, for instance, uh, gave support um, for salaries of the of the employees in some some uh, sectors and companies. Uh, so, so this is very positive. The governments are, are acting very fast and, and making uh, these uh, uh, decisions uh, to, to not to let the economies fall into very deep uh, uh, economic uh, situation. Uh, as I mentioned that real estate isn't like in, in directly uh, affected, but uh, but we, we will see negative effects. Uh, our analysis shows that commercial real estate, hot, hotels mainly, office buildings, will be the uh, most affected. And also, for instance, these co-working spaces, which have been popular in last um, last years. Uh, uh, residential developments, which are now ending or, or are in the final stages, uh, should be okay. We have seen that uh, many pre-sale agreements have been de de uh, uh, have been delayed or ended uh, by the buyers. But um, but in general, uh, residential developments uh, should be okay. But not, of course, these which which uh, have been recently started. So so everything um, in general in real estate in our portfolio should be okay because most of our portfolio is related to residential um, real estate but yeah commercial real estate and the specific uh, hotels uh, restaurants um, they have uh, and will have uh, major problems mm. uh, so are you concerned about the commercial real estate that uh, state core has as a loan collateral or how is um, your perception in that uh, sense? Uh, no, as I mentioned, most of most of um, our collaterals are in the residential sector. So I think mm. that 20, maximum twenty percent is related to commercial. But um, I see that there will be, of course, problems problems because um, um, tenants are. Are struggling uh, in in this sec in these um, uh, properties and um, and we have talked to our borrowers and, and everybody uh, uh, are 
are asking for uh, rent re rent reduction and um, and have said that uh, if this uh, situation doesn't end soon then they will have more problems and they cannot pay rent so yes there will be problems but uh, i don't think that uh, default problems because usually our um, risk appetite towards this commercial real estate uh, properties is low so loan to value is low and we have sufficient buffer uh, also which has happened is that um, uh, we uh, try to help our borrowers in prolonging these loans or change the uh, payment to graphs or schedule schedules uh, maybe they can pay some interest uh, uh, at the end of the maturity we have uh, for example done like uh, 50 percent interest payment reductions for our borrowers so in general i don't see a major problem but uh, but we are monitoring the situation hmm. um, while there are multiple scenarios of the future uh, hmm. and uh, media cannot be trusted as it's mostly focused on um, getting clicks um, what is your realistic view of the time perspective of these uh, changes and uh, and the depth? Mm, I see that uh, if the virus isn't contained by by autumn, then uh, then we will see a major contraction of economies also in 2021. Um, but if it's contained, then probably the next year will be um, quite a sharp recovery. Um, I mentioned that governments are supporting the economies, but also the central banks have um, initiated their plans, and so money inflow is uh, will be quite strong. And so, if the virus is contained, then I see that the recovery should be quite quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you mentioned also uh, the stress test. Um, as most of the investors uh, probably know, Stekor has made um, uh, stress test analysis, uh, how different factors uh, affect the investor's portfolio. Uh, would you like to tell us a bit more uh, about this uh, test and uh, how is it working or, or um, what are the predic um, predictions there? Mm -hmm. So, like usually in bank, in bank, uh, banking services or in, in, in this sector, we also monitor our portfolio, trade portfolio. So one very good um, uh, instrument to stress uh, and, and see what the portfolio will do in a very um, uh, negative scenario is this st stress test scenarios. Uh, our stress test is quite uh, simple so we uh, stressed our investors returns uh, and there were two factors uh, uh, default rate and also the value change of the properties and our stress test was was worst worst case scenario stress test so so um, uh, but with assumptions that uh, we will get also for investors these penalties, indemnities, and and so forth back if we sell the collaterals. Um, when borrowers um, uh, go into default, and we see that there is quite substantial buffer for our investors in our portfolio. Uh, as you know, that um, our historical loan to value is sixty percent, but um, if um, but if uh, uh, we add uh, to our claims also these, uh, or include into our claims also these indemnities, uh, penalties, and everything. So when the claim is sold, then and there is sub substantial loan to value buffer, then then investors should be okay and they shouldn't uh, receive any capital loss. Um, of course, every stress test is with assumptions, and one analyst can and to their, their assumptions and their model, but uh, uh, but this is our business model. So of course we will uh, update this model, uh, taking in into account the current situation and uh, and the news and and the factors and uh, and the information that we get from the borrowers and that we get from the sale of the defaulted uh, collateral. So 
So, but in general, I think that our portfolio is quite well protected against uh, this uh, decline. Hmm. Um, I got one question um, uh, regarding the security. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of loans have um, um, also additionally to the real estate, a personal guarantee of some mm -hmm. borrowers. So what does it exactly mean? And when does such a personal guarantee come into action? Mm -hmm. So when, when a loan is issued, issued in, uh, through our platform, then usually, yes, we have this main collateral. It's always real estate, a first rank mortgage, which means that when a loan is uh, in uh, defaulted status and we put it on uh, auction and sell it, through enforcement procedures, then firstly, investors get the money back uh, from this sale. But if we don't get the, the uh, claim fully back, then we will turn to the uh, person who gave the suretyship and we will try to get uh, uh, this money, this gap uh, from him or her. Um, so basically this is going against the pri uh, private person's uh, um, assets, uh, their wealth, and, and we've tried to uh, re return the money from, from their personal uh, like savings or, 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 uh, or their uh, real estate or something like that. But usually this is like a soft uh, guarantee because um, time-wise, Every private person can uh, write, write their assets to another person's name uh, and then file a pi private person um, uh, bankruptcy. So this is some, sometimes helpful, but uh, in most cases, uh, uh, the main collateral, real estate collateral should uh, cover and, and be the most important one in our security position. Hmm. Um, are you planning or have you already uh, adjusted the risk assessment of borrowers? Would you uh, introduce uh, yeah, the current um, assessment of risk? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, we have adjusted. So uh, when I joined the company, we looked it over and, and uh, we made um, adjustments uh, also in the end of last year. Uh, we have remained very conservative. So we are in a business uh, where borrowers, uh, uh, how can I say it, are uh, financially more weaker than, for instance, in banks. Uh, uh, we are more uh, towards uh, the uh, collateral. Uh, we still analyze the borrower and try to uh, understand their business model. And uh, we now uh, spend more time on analyzing the liquidity of the collateral. Uh, we made a quite rapid change and we are not um, uh, anymore uh, looking uh, these small towns and, um, and areas where there are very few people living and the liquidity of the um, real estate is very low. So currently for the past few months we have, have been concentrating on metropolitan and growth areas. I will show a, show a table um, uh, later on. Um, we are now thinking and uh, calculating our, our loan to values, uh, which we offer to the borrowers uh, um, with a more negative stress test or buffer. Uh, so every LTV is with buffer. If, if something happens, then we should uh, still get uh, the principal plus interest and, and, and other claims back for them, uh, our investors. Uh, which we are looking um, and doing or, uh, and have been doing uh, for, the, for the last couple of years uh, in the companies. Uh, if we receive an external valuation report, then uh, we just don't uh, uh, accept this value. So we reevaluate everything. So we open these valuations, look at the um, assumptions, if there are any, uh, try to elim eliminate them. Uh, uh, look the um, uh, comparable prices that have been used, all the assumptions, for instance, in, in cash flow models. So, uh, and we use our internal database, our connections, uh, 
and try to be very, very critical about these external evaluation reports. Um, one change uh, which ha has been made is that the residential real estate is now the top one sector last couple of months. Uh, however, however if, if there is liquid commercial real estate with strong tenants, uh, then we also uh, take these applications. Uh, we see that larger land developments are, are not very liquid right now, but of course, if a borrower is a very strong company, uh, some larger group, then we might uh, accept these applications also. And, uh, and we, we are very like buffer oriented. So everything has to be with, with buffer. So, so, and every borrower has to be analyzed and, and, uh, and we need to understand what is their game plan. Also, uh, how they see uh, their product or, or their business model work uh, in coming months and, and, uh, and also in, in, in coming years. Mm. So these are um, mainly the factors uh, that uh, you're looking when new projects coming um, up for the platform. Um, yeah, and then including some changes that has been done during the crisis uh, situation, right? Yes, yes. But mm. in general, we have remained conservative. We still analyze internally. Uh, no, risk people usually don't trust anyone. So as I mentioned that uh, we, we look uh, every, every borrower, use our external uh, databases, great info, payment remarks, everything is double checked. Every valuation report is double checked. So, so, so this will can continue and we are not going to make any changes uh, in the near future or, or in the later future. Hmm. That's clear. Um, yeah, I haven't, haven't got uh, any new questions at the mm -hmm. moment, so oh. I think you can... Then let's move forward, yeah. So oh, I'm sorry, in... sorry, just got one. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Um, are there enough projects in the pipeline to uh, invest uh, for the next 12 months? Yes. Uh, as the last 12 months, yeah. Uh, yes, we see that some decline uh, from the borrower side is um, currently in our our uh, business but we still get very attractive uh, projects and um, and so i still believe that uh, we should provide investors quite uh, quite a healthy healthy package of of uh, projects in, in coming 12 months so so uh, no worries there i think mm. so the the uh, small and uh, medium uh, uh, size companies uh, do really need the support in uh, during this time. Yes, and then the yeah. state has has, uh, has said publicly that we will continue, and our investors have have also showed that they still want to invest and help these companies. So, and we are not so uh, so rigid like the banks uh, who have stopped, for instance, their uh, issuance of new loans and and are currently concentrating only only these payment reliefs and um, and the extensions so so yeah we are still here uh, uh, we are here to stay <laughs> like our founder founder uh, uh, likes to likes to say and and so um, so yeah i see that demand from borrower side will not go away and in investors also want to invest mm. did I, I hope that answered uh, the question uh, as well Mm, so I mentioned this um, mm, locations uh, that we are now now more concentrated on. So, uh, particular example is that um, the capital cities and nearby regions are the li liquid ones. So people still uh, mm, come to live in these um, capital cities and the nearby areas. So uh, we see that these should not uh, have so. So large price reductions in values in coming uh, months, and and so that is why we are now more focused on these uh, cities. Uh, but now uh, I mentioned this uh, loan prolongation. Um, investors have uh, felt that uh, and seen our loan updates, and and uh, have got uh, many news that uh, borrowers. Uh, uh, 
that we have uh, changed the um, you know, loan schedules and prolonged the loans and and extended the maturity so so this is currently the situation but um, but this is quite understandable because uh, this is quite uh, an ex unexpected uh, crisis and uh, i hope that the investors understand that uh, uh, there is no point to start these enforcement procedures and 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 put the loans into default but give some time for the economy and the borrowers to recover uh, we usually demand in general that the borrowers uh, before prolonging clear all their debts and this hasn't changed and most of the borrowers have this buffer for interest payments or or fees and everything uh, so so this is the new reali reality and and we see that this will continue in until the until autumn uh, at least so but mm. I, I i can assure to our investors that uh, we analyze every uh, prolonging application thoroughly we look through the the need of prolonging and and we just don't give uh, this uh, extensions uh, so easily mm. For example, um, I got an information from uh, one investor that the um, German government uh, introduced a law that uh, loan payments, including interest, rate, uh, interest um, mm -hmm. can be stopped until the 30th of June, so maybe mm -hmm. even for a longer period. period. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, um, you answered actually also how, how the corona pandemic uh, will affect these payments. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure it might. Uh, effect, but uh, like you mentioned, that uh, we are um, giving them uh, flexible uh, possibilities to, um, yeah, heal themselves from yeah. the crisis and so on. Yeah, I think this is a um, um, very relevant and uh, logic uh, step. Mm -hmm. um, yes. We have seen also some discussions in Facebook groups, um, fellow groups, uh, that um, um, Estonian government is stopping loan payments and. Um, the question uh, how is this affecting our business uh, in estonia this is uh, not the case for um, uh, business loans uh, i think it was a case for private loans right do you know anything about this i have heard some news but uh, but nothing nothing certain but uh, usually uh, when banks give these um, extensions or, or payment reliefs then then principal payments are stopped but they but borrowers need to pay the interest still so mm -hmm. so i i cannot see that they are uh, stopping the the whole payment uh, interest plus principal so principal. Mm -hmm. yeah but principal yeah this is quite uh, quite uh, common right now mm -hmm. in, in in banks and in financial sector in estonia so mm -hmm. in that case in a st estate guru case uh, most of the borrowers are paying the principal back in the end of um, mm -hmm. uh, period so um, in that sense, um, we couldn't anyway do this kind of change to stop. Um, uh, yes, yes. But in some cases, we have um, uh, decreased the interest payment, like fifty percent, mm. or or when the interest payment uh, for the maturity is uh, is coming in in a couple of months, then we have put these interest payments uh, at the maturity in the end of the loan. But these are very few few examples. Uh, uh, so yeah, I think that in general um, we cannot help as much as as banks, where principal is also repaid every month. But uh, but we can help in some way our borrowers. Exactly. Um, I got uh, one question about uh, German uh, new projects. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any coming problems with new projects in Germany? uh new projects coming yeah we have several applications and and we are currently analyzing these um we have some real estate development projects uh, uh also some commercial but i don't know the exact date so uh when they will be up on the platform but yeah we have in the pipeline these also mm. but uh at the moment the situation is uh, with the projects the same there has been any big changes no 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 because um, most of the projects in germany are like pre-booked uh, this residential development so and we are we are planning to only offer them this breach loan 
until they get the bank financing or 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 the or the sale of the collateral to these buyers. So so in general, yeah, no no problems with uh, these pro projects. Hmm. Um, could you mention um, are some of the borrowers already uh, communicating uh, with us uh, that they have some problems and need support? Like, mm -hmm. do we have already this kind of communi communication from borrowers? Yeah, we are in constant uh, communication with the borrowers. Uh, some borrowers, yes, yeah, say that, for instance, uh, uh, their rental revenue has dropped, but still they get some payments and, and, um, but we haven't seen a very rap rapid rise uh, of, of this problem client. So most of our uh, borrowers are quite well uh, protected. They have some financial buffer so they can pay our interest payments. And, um, and as we are doing the short term loans, for instance, in real estate development, so um, 12 month uh, maturity. So and, and the sales in the last couple of years uh, uh, have been quite good. So they have pre-bookings already signed this uh, pre-sale agreement. So, and now they are finalizing them. So our business isn't like long-term in, in this broader sense. So, so in general, I, there are some um, problem uh, borrowers, but, uh, but not, not very uh, rapid or large increase of them. Mm, there has been always uh, like <laughs> mm -hmm. these or such um, uh, borrowers, so it's um, yeah, it's a daily business for um, for us. Yeah, yeah. So of course, of course. So uh, not nothing, nothing major to worry about. Uh, our communication department is still working uh, in, in the same pace, and and also the risk department. So we haven't seen any any major uh, workload increase. And then so business as usual, but uh, maybe maybe some some clients need more help, but in general, no, right at at, the, at this current moment. Mm. Um, a short question about um, new countries. Uh, what are your plans to expand uh, your business in uh, to other countries, for example, Germany? Any changes now or? No, still still plans to penetrate more into Germany. UK is still in the pipeline. Uh, some talks entering into Sweden, uh, so these are the main main focused countries. Uh, so nothing, no no major changes there. So current situation uh, gives us more opportunities to enter these markets if banks are still and and will be uh, conservative. So we will we will see that in coming months. So maybe you will hear us. Uh, more in these countries and, and, and we should have a healthy demand of our, our uh, product. Hmm. Uh, one question I am getting uh, uh, very often from the investors is um, that uh, they compare us with uh, German and Austrian um, platforms uh, mm -hmm. that offer approximately 8% of, uh, uh, six, six to 8% of uh, return. Mm -hmm. And, um, where um, where does a state guru get such uh, borrowers that uh, we can um, make it possible for investors to um, get this high interest um, rate that we are offering, like uh, twelve uh, percent annually? No, so it, it all comes to down to the risk premiums and and also the economic situation. So so Eastern Europe has been uh, riskier a little bit. So and and our market average in these mortgage loans is 10 plus so nothing nothing uh, um, new here uh, so I, I don't know can we compare austrian and, and estonian interest rates and business environment so probably austrian is is uh, less riskier and, and our country is um, with more risk so so there there is the change and 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 uh, so i, I cannot uh, and I cannot uh, see that investors should be worried, but this is the business environment or economic situation in, in, in these countries. So, so. Mm. I, I'm personally not sure, but I also think that one thing is the uh, fee that the platforms are taking. For example, a state guru um, success fee is 2 to 3%. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, this is actually pretty low, uh, and the state guru is covering all the costs that that uh, we have for mm -hmm. the operational uh, part. So, uh, as these platforms that I have looked also, they don't have this information public, um, like the price list. So mm -hmm. it might also be a reason that just the success fee is uh, much higher. Yeah, yeah, we have um, seen that in Finland, where our success fee is like three percent, three percent up to four percent, but but our competitors have like five percent, and and so so yeah, we need to like maybe analyze these platforms more deeply, like you said. So what mm -hmm. is what is what is behind these curtains and. Uh, why is this change so significant? Mm, exactly. So, um, yeah, but I think um, uh, you can proceed with your next um, slide. Mm -hmm. So our portfolio, as I, as I mentioned right now, is quite stable. Uh, I want to always talk about default. So currently 6 million euros of loans out of 100 million outstanding portfolio is in default. No changes in in a couple of months. We see some loans being back, uh, being paid back. Uh, so so uh, options for some sell of uh, claims are in progress. So uh, mainly in Latvia, we see that uh, we will get some loans back. So our in general, our default rate will stay below ten percent. Uh, we have see, seen some increase in late loans. Um, but still, uh, I, I think that uh, borrowers who have uh, already uh, uh, had these problems or or uh, who are more fragile, they have already come to us. We have prolonged the loans or give them other possibilities to pay back the loan in a, in a longer future. And uh, as I mentioned, I see that our uh, portfolio will still grow and then the sales side will happen and, and there is uh, borrower demand for our product uh, uh, and the returns will be a little bit higher as you as all investors have seen that uh, that uh, currently on the platform we have uh, 12 minimum 12 percent interest rates in some cases 13 14 even so i, I can call it like uh, uh, risk premium of this coronavirus uh, because we are open marketplace uh, and uh, and that's uh, that's why a little bit a uh, little bit uh, interest rate increase was necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. Does this mean does this mean that the risk level has been increased significantly as well or not significantly? But yeah, of course, some risk level. But uh, but as I mentioned, we are open marketplace, so investors, retail investors, who are for 40,000 that we have uh, maybe are more sensitive to this uh, news about Corona and then this end of the world. So, uh, so we needed to calm them down and, and our borrowers accepted it. So, so I think, yeah, risks uh, have increased, but not substance, substantially. Mm. Mm. Uh, and what are you, um, like, how are you ensuring that the um that the um, um, portfolio will stay um, as healthy as um, as it is right now? No, as I mentioned, changes in the credit policy, policy we are mm -hmm. spending more and more, like we have had in the, in, the, um, in the past of analyzing this project. We have restricted our, our uh, locations where we uh, finance these projects. Uh, also, from the debt collection side, um, uh we have uh, also uh, made some changes we have become more effective uh we have now a dedicated credit risk team under me uh who is dealing with this debt collection uh, we have put more effort uh, on legal problems uh, solving them uh, some borrowers are hostile they don't want to pay back and, and dispute everything so we are put, putting more effort on these actions uh, we have very strong partners in uh, in uh, all the countries uh, who are concentrated on this debt collection. They ha are debt collectors, former police officers, uh, 
uh, attorneys at law who know ins and outs of, of problem, problematic loans and borrowers. Uh, we made some changes about reminders and calls to borrowers. So we are calling um, you know, basically every week to borrowers and, and if necessary, every day. Uh, we are sending reminders, SMSs, uh, emails. So this is quite typical in the financial sector and, and we are also doing it. And, and, and we maybe changed, or how can I say it? We, we know, acknowledge that the, the main goal of the debt collection should be getting the funds back to investors with the highest possible return. So everything uh, in our, our debt, debt collection uh, team is is uh, doing for, for that goal so every, every action is taken for that goal so mm. which cases have been uh, the most difficult to um, to solve um, is there some situations you have uh, not uh, come across yet uh, no we have seen everything and and during my career also in the financial sector i have seen everything but uh, no, most uh, most problematic are, are these legal disputes in courts uh, where we need to spend two years in the court arguing uh, about every detail so so laws are quite uh, uh, helping uh, these problematic powers and and uh, and so these are the most difficult cases uh, but uh, but if we get uh, property on auction then usually we we will get it sold and then because our risk assessment has been quite good and we have chosen quite liquid collaterals as our uh, for our project so mm. um, very often investors would like to have more information um, about the, the loan updates um, and there is always a there is a fine line between uh, information that the stakeholder can share or not so what are the principles um, about this uh, loan update communication? Like, yeah, according to the what principles mm -hmm. uh, we decide what to publish? No, no in general, we, we will inform um, our investors as soon as possible. We, we will get this new information, but sometimes uh, mm, uh, if, there, if the information is too sensitive, we cannot put it under these loan updates. For instance, we have a buyer who is some wealthy businessman who wants to buy this collateral or this claim. So we just cannot jeopardize this transaction and give out this information because uh, sometimes these wealthy persons don't like this uh, if, if somebody knows that they are wanting to buy this property or something like that in the, in the auction or in, and, or, or in other ways. So, so we are doing our best to give as much information as possible, but yeah, sometimes there are reasons why, why we cannot give this information. Uh, but we have made changes during this crisis. So, so now every two weeks, we will put a loan update for these latent defaulted loans. Um, uh, we have one dedicated customer specialist who is answering all the uh, inquiries about uh, these, uh, questions that you have uh, related to latent default loans and also these loan updates are uh, put manually there are also automatic updates but we are also providing more manual updates and we should answer all the questions in 48 hours and uh, that's uh, that has been the case in in the last uh, six months i think hmm. um <clears throat> Could you enlighten a bit how a state guru is um, uh, dealing with the defaults and um, and fighting? Uh, I don't know if fighting is the right word, but uh, the, uh, against the price uh, reductions, like how to get the best out of the uh, auction. Mm -hmm. So all depends on the on the specific case, but in general. Uh, we have this initial evaluation report. Uh, also, we have our own database, uh, our own connections. So when we tell to the bailiff what price to put on the auction, uh, this is all based on analysis. And then usually uh, we will take into account also our claim 
but yeah, sometimes investors have uh, lost their interest uh, or part of our, of their interest. But uh, we are quite sure that all of our collaterals um, cover minimum the principal amount. And so, so, uh, no, but all all comes to the initial analysis. So and the initial offer to the borrower. So when we get the new valuation report, like I mentioned, we double check everything and we will try to understand if the value there is the true fair value of this uh, this particular property. Hmm. Um, would you also explain how does a state guru uh, company decide which project can be released on the platform? <clears throat> so usually we have um, uh, loan managers who do this first analysis of a project. They look the borrower and then the collateral. If uh, it matches our profile i can show you uh, so uh, then it this loan application is sent to our risk team we analyze it uh, and then a committee dedicated committee is uh, making this decision and this great analysis is concentrating on two main main parts borrower where we check everything the business plan payment remarks history criminal records, everything, and then the uh, property or the collateral where we look at the valuation report, uh, use also our external partners who have uh, in some countries are doing these automatic valuations for a more quick valua valuation, we look at the transactions, uh, also uh, um, these real estate portals where are lots of sales, ads, we analyze them and we will try to analyze uh, or get to the result if this uh, price in or value in the valuation report is is fair so mm. these are the main main main, main steps and then credit create committee uh, which is independent from the sales side is making decision what loans i will get and and what uh, and in what terms are getting up to the platform so everything is uh, independent uh, and double checked or triple checked uh, in our platform. Mm. Um, it's probably the uh, um, interest, interesting one question. Um, are there any certain projects on a stake or platform where investors should be careful about? <laughs> careful about I, I no, it, it all it depends on the investor's risk appetite if if investor is is uh, uh, afraid of uh, for example uh, uh, over ltv 60 percent uh, loans then then uh, he or she doesn't want no need to invest this uh, into this project so but uh, in general i can i can assure that every project is uh, thoroughly analyzed and uh, and all the information that is presented under this project is double checked and 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 uh, no no false uh, arguments are are being put on our platform so mm. so the main is yeah the risk appetite and also the i don't know risk tolerance or yeah how yeah, yeah. yeah the same the same so investors should should uh, think what is there uh, like goals and and how they want to uh, increase their wealth and and their portfolio of loans. So so they they should be the ones deciding what what projects are riskier and what not. So so, mm. so that that is the main 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 basic fundamentals of investing investing. I think. Mm. So uh, would you uh, point out the main. Um, um, bullet points or main uh, uh, important things to keep in mind uh, when investing and also a question do you use uh, auto invest or do you invest manually yourself no, no let's let's start from the from the first end. question yeah yeah I, I like to invest manually because i'm a risk person so i like to double check every platform and every every project so that's a habit it's time consuming but if an investor uh, doesn't have this time or knowledge so yeah i i would just suggest using auto invest but in smaller sums maybe 
Um, but in general, investing, no. I would do always to double check and look and, and try to understand uh, the borrower, the collateral and the liquidity. In our business, the liquidity is very important. So, so I would read as much as macroeconomic news and, and analysis as possible. And, um, and also, I would try to understand the real estate market, how it works, what areas are more liquid, what areas or properties are riskier and so forth. So, so I would spend some time on, on, on learning the ins and outs of, of, uh, of uh, the products that these crowdfunding platforms are, are uh, giving out. Mm. And since we have you on board as a, a credit committee, so that means um, you are doing the half uh, job uh, for investors anyway. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. Can, we um, can be sure that the most of the risks are already, um, um, how is it the right word? Um, mitigated. Mitigated, yeah. And then before they come to the platform, because you are the guy who says, uh, is it the green light or not? Right. There are other members also in the committee, but only from the risk department. And so uh, I can reveal that um, that uh, the members are. No, my background is banking, but we have uh, real estate developer, uh, real real estate appraiser, also um, um, a member who is uh, also active in in real estate, real estate investing business. So. Uh, so we have quite strong knowledge of the market and the loans and the environment. So, and we also use our owners and, and their know-how of this real estate business. Uh, so we are. I'm pretty sure that that uh, our analysis is quite thorough. Hmm. Um, one question about um, as of now: Is there any country where a state guru operates? that has been more affected than others, the Baltics or Finland? Mm, no, when I look at the macroeconomic situation, I see that maybe uh, Latvia, Lithuania are more affected. Their forecasts are ma more problematic when we look at the Baltics, but yes, yeah, Spain, because Spain is uh, very, uh, tourism. Yeah, dependent on tourism and, and, and so, and Portugal also, so these markets, but we don't have any major exposure in these countries uh, right now, so which is good. So mm -hmm. we are monitoring the situation, but in general, I think that Baltics, Finland are in the same, also in the Germany, uh, that we shouldn't have uh, big problems. Mm. Um, here is also one question about the platform prof uh, profitability, pro profitability mm -hmm. uh, at the moment. Um, could you tell something about this? Actually, we just published uh, our um, um, business um, results from uh, Q1 on uh, our newsletter, on our platform, or our website. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think that could answer the investor question as well. Like there are all the business um, uh, result, results um, written down and uh, the first Q1 was very uh, successful. We doubled uh, all the um, numbers. Uh, Q2 will probably be uh, not so um, successful as uh, the first one was. But um, yeah, we don't see any major um, yeah, problems in that case, sense um, for us. Um, or yeah, I, I, I can tell the same, yeah, that we are operating, every, everybody is at home. Okay, I'm, I'm all, all alone in the office right now, but, uh, but yeah, so we are still operating. Uh, our business is fully digitalized and, and there shouldn't be any problems with our, our business so, or our platform. So. Hmm. Uh, one thing also to the online business that uh, in Estonia, I think it was a week or one and a half week ago that Estonian notaries uh, managed now to make all the contracts online. Uh, and Lithuania is also now um, dealing or trying to um, make it happen in their country. 
So I think there will be in other countries as well in Europe that will probably try to use this kind of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th this is the result of the crisis. So, and, and for our business, it it, it will uh, be very positive and, and will increase the efficiency uh, mm -hmm. to get these deals done and originated. So, so this is very, very good uh, opportunity for our business also. So, mm -hmm. I also think that the, the crisis have uh, very a, a lot of positive. Um, um, sides as well. Uh, a lot of things are changing and uh, changing in a good um, way. Or yeah. Yeah, I agree totally. Yeah. Mm. Um, we have been asked also about the coming crowdfunding campaign on Cedar. Um, I have to say that we have uh, next week uh, on twenty third uh, also an online webinar. Uh, so I really uh, encourage. Uh, everybody who is interested in that to take um, to participate in that in that so you will get more information uh, about this as well like um, yeah a state guru is uh, raising funds um, through cedars um, platform so got more information on the webinar yeah so these are at the moment the questions that were open um, do you have anything left, Andres? No, I think that we can wrap it up. And I want to thank everybody for listening. And if you have any questions, then please turn to our customer support and we will answer everything. Exactly. So I hope everybody enjoyed. And uh, yeah, uh, have a nice uh, weekend with your family and uh, stay healthy. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye.